Hello, George Romanich here. Welcome to Fundamentals of Weather and Climate playlist. In today's video, we are going to talk about the weather and atmospheric composition of other planets in our solar system. The center of our solar system is the Sun, and then we have planets starting from Mercury, Venus, Earth with our little moon, Mars, and then there is a wide asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, so this is ob obviously not to scale, and then Jupiter, and then we have Saturn, and then Uranus, and then Neptune. If we start with Mercury, that's the closest planet to the Sun, and this planet does not have atmosphere. It is so hot on the surface of Mercury that is pointing towards the Sun that all gases that even have a chance to exist in the atmosphere are ejected into the outer space. This planet is also rotating very slowly around its axis, so the day on Mercury lasts longer than the year on Mercury. If we go to the next planet, that would be Venus. Venus is by size the closest planet to Earth, but weather and atmosphere are profoundly different. We would not be able to survive on Venus. Venus's atmosphere has 95% of carbon dioxide, CO2, and only a little bit of nitrogen, N2, and oxygen, O2. Wind speeds on Venus exceed 200 kilometers per hour. That is over 50 meters per second. But more importantly, pressure at the surface of the Venus is extremely high. 90 times higher than the pressure on the surface of the Earth. We know that the pressure on the surface of the Earth is around 1000 millibars. So 90 times that is 90,000 millibars, 90,000 hectopascals. You would have to go approximately 900 meters under the surface of the ocean to experience pressures that, would you, that you would experience on the surface of this planet. This planet is very, very hot. Temperatures are around 480 degrees Celsius. And this planet is so hot because 95% of atmosphere is CO2. And CO2 is greenhouse gas that traps radiation that Venus sends back to the space and heats this atmosphere, therefore, to this extremely high temperature. So we can see in our own solar system what happens if atmosphere is predominantly rich on CO2. Greenhouse gas effect can rise temperatures to extreme values. In our atmosphere, CO2 is basically a trace gas that is way less than 1%. There is approximately 420 molecules of CO2 for every million molecules of other gases in the air. I covered that in previous videos. Also, Venus is the only planet in our solar system that is rotating in the other direction compared to other planets. It is rotating in the clockwise direction when looked from above. And it is still a mystery, it is not clear why Venus is rotating in the opposite direction compared to other planets. Then we have Mars, probably planet that is most talked about in media. And uh, everybody wants to go and visit Mars, but that wouldn't be so good idea without some proper safety measures. First of all, Mars has very, very thin atmosphere, very rare atmosphere. We believe that most of the atmosphere is CO2, and then there is just a little bit of other gases, but there is very little atmosphere to begin with. Temperature at the surface of the Mars is approximately negative 60 degrees Celsius, which is very, very cold. Average day in northern Canada. There are no clouds. We believe that back at the beginning of uh, Mars and solar system formation, there were clouds on Mars. But, well, this is maybe interesting discussion to have. We believe that Mars and Earth, some 4.5, 4 billion years ago, when they both formed together with the rest of the solar system, were quite similar. So the question is, why did Earth evolve in such a different way compared to Mars? We believe that volcanic activity was responsible for generation of atmosphere in both of these planets. However, volcanic activity was higher when Earth was formed but it didn't decline that much. We still have volcanoes, and throughout the history of the Earth, we had volcanoes and steam vents. On Mars, research suggests that volcanic activity significantly dropped throughout the history of that planet, 
and the planet did not have time, so to speak, to develop the atmosphere. Secondly, this planet is smaller than the Earth, gravity is weaker, so it is easier for gases to escape gravitational pull of the planet. Pressure at the surface of, the v of Mars is just 7 hectopascals. That is less than 100 of the pressure at the surface of the Earth. However, we did notice, I mean NASA's uh, rovers noticed there is wind on the Mars and these dust storms that can envelop most of the planet sometimes. And you will notice here in the top right that NASA's rover also discovered dust devil on the surface of the Mars. Isn't that just beautiful? Here is a nice overview of Sun, other planets in our solar system as well as, well as Pluto. Pluto is not planet, it's planetoid. But here is their diameter, average distance to the Sun, average surface temperature and main composition of these atmospheres. I will remove myself so you can take a picture of this and use it in your studies. Now if we go to other planets, then we have Jupiter. Jupiter, perhaps you didn't know, but is extremely, extremely important planet for life on Earth. Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system and it tends to attract asteroids that are coming from outside of the solar system as well as the one that are in solar system. So these asteroids and comets do not have a chance quite often to get into planets that are closer to the sun. So most of us probably evolved on this planet because we are shielded by Jupiter. So thank you Jupiter very very much. So to speak Jupiter takes punches that would otherwise come to Earth, Mars and so on but it's all related to Jupiter. Jupiter is gas giant. As we saw in that table, the gases that are dominating the atmosphere of Jupiter are hydrogen and helium. It's like a small star, so to speak. But weather is extremely violent on Jupiter. We believe Jupiter doesn't have solid surface. It is still a matter of research. But energy for Jupiter comes from hydrogen being collapsed towards the core of Jupiter into liquid hydrogen and then that releases a lot of energy and that energy together with very rapid rotation of Jupiter causes all these storms like this great red spot. This storm is uh, rotating in anticyclonic in a anticyclonic way, sorry, in the southern hemisphere of Jupiter it is between these two big jet streams and you can see a lot of other storms uh, embedded around this very, very big anticyclonic storm. Just to give you uh, an idea of the size of Jupiter, this is size of the Earth compared to this great red spot and then compared to the rest of Jupiter. Jupiter is a massive, massive planet. If you fit this properly, almost three Earths could be placed in just one storm that is happening in Jupiter. Now, other planets in our solar system, as I said, are Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Saturn has these beautiful rings. I didn't put picture here. These rings, we believe, are a consequence of strong Saturn's gravity attracting comets and asteroids, as well as perhaps crushing one of its moons that came too close. Temperatures on Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, Uranus, Neptune are very, very low, and uh, these planets have very violent storms, just like here on uh, Jupiter, wind speeds often exceed 200 kilometers per hour, sometimes even 300 kilometers per hour, that's a lot, and uh, even 200 meters per second actually, I read that, so to think about it, speed of sound is 330 meters per second, wind speeds on these planets can exceed 200, 250 meters per second, that is extremely violent. Now, for some of these planets, like Neptune, which is the last planet in our solar system, we also observe that we have very strong storms over there, but it is not clear, still a matter of research, what is powering those storms. Because Neptune is so far away, for example, that it receives less than one thousandth of energy that we receive from the Sun. So, very small amount of solar radiation reaches Neptune, but yet there are all these storms that are fueling over there. 
In this video, we gave very short, brief overview of weather and composition of the atmosphere on other planets in our solar system. As you can see, Earth is the only planet we can live, at least now. So, until next video, goodbye.